Hello everyone, my name is Barrick, and I am one of the founders and lead engineers for the Redstone Development Foundation. And as promised, today I'm going to be going through and showing you how my ASCII word processor works. But let's start with the basics. What does it mean when I say ASCII? Well, this is the ASCII table. It's a standardized table of 128 characters that can be represented by binary codes. Now this version is organized with the first four bits on the left and the last three bits on top. So if we start with the first bit, 1000011 is a lowercase a. Now the first two columns are non-printable system characters, so they aren't programmed into the word processor because there's no point. All the other characters are, except for SP and DEL. Now if you notice, it's only the last three bits that change between an uppercase and a lowercase letter. Now this is important because it's relevant to how the shift key works. But enough with the table. Let's get back to Minecraft. So what I'm going to do is show you what happens when you push a button on the keyboard. So let's do that now. Hit the A button. And as you can see, it lights up this feed. This feed is connected to this torch. This torch is currently powering this line. And when this feed is on, it turns this torch off, which turns this line off, which turns these torches on. Now these torches represent the binary code for the particular character, in this case, A. The binary code for A is 7, 6, and 1. So each one of these feeds goes from the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So for the sake of showing you how this works, I'm going to break this torch, which will permanently turn this feed on for the remainder of this uh, video. Now what you see here is the feed lines below being active when also being transferred down to the main feed lines on the bottom. Now once these feeds are active, the first four feeds here just pass right on through and into the next mechanism. The last three, the seventh, sixth, and fifth bits, actually go through what I call the shift modifiers. And what the shift modifiers do is when you press the shift key, what they do is they look for a particular set of uh, inputs, for example, like this, the seventh and the sixth inputs. And if that particular input is being fed into it, depending on whether the shift key is pressed or not, it will modify the last three bits uh, in order to uh, adjust the character from, I say, the lowercase a to the uppercase a. So the code for the A character, in fact, the code for all of the characters, are their lowercase or the lower set um, binary codes. So how this works is, the, in this case, the seventh and the sixth bit pass up into here, which turn these torches off. And because this fifth bit is off, it also leaves this input feed off. Now this is the filter for this particular bit set. Uh, the other three are set up for different uh, filters. For example, this one is set up to look for the fifth, sixth, and seventh bits, all of them being on. Uh, and this one is set up with the fifth and sixth bits being on and the seventh being off. And as you can see, because the signal is not the proper signal, this particular feed is uh, still on. So for the one that is off, what this does is it activates this row of torches which acts as an inhibitor. And what the inhibitor does is it blocks whatever signal is coming from the keyboard and allows it to modify that signal no matter what's going on with the signal coming from the keyboard. So it basically lets the shift modifier completely take over these last three bits. And the way that that works is, as you can see underneath, the three feeds 
get passed on into these inverters. And the inverters pass the signal through to another set of uh, inverters, which reverts the signal back to its normal form. This inhibitor line here, when this feed is off, prevents any signal, like this signal, from being passed on to here. As you can see, that torch is on, but that torch is off. And the shift modifier, which is this, has two torches active right now because the shift key is off. If the shift key was on, then this feed would be on, which shuts these torches off, and this feed would be off, which shut, turns this torch on. That modifies the binary input that is going into the decoder to be 1 and 7 instead of 1, 6, and 7. And 1 and 7 is the binary code for the capital A. So that's how the shift modifiers work. Ah, one thing I forgot to mention is that the any of the shift modifiers that are not currently activated, in other words, the signal is not matched to the one that it's looking for, both of these lines are active, which means that it basically allows the normal signal to pass through unchanged. Because these torches don't modify it, and because the inhibitor is off, it lets the normal signal pat in, uh, the normal inverters operate as intended to let the signal pass through. This next mechanism is the signal synchronizer. Now this is necessary because of the shift modifiers. The signals that get passed from the keyboard, because they have to also partially go through all of this, become desynchronized, so they all arrive at different times. This confuses the decoder. So what this device does is it resynchronizes all of the signals so that they all get passed to the decoder at the same time again. And the way that that works, and currently I have this piece of redstone broken so that it holds the signal, uh, is there are a row of seven bits. And these seven bits get turned on by the signals that get passed through. So in this case, with our lowercase a, the first bit is um, on, the s as well as the seventh and the sixth bits. So once the signals uh, enter this mechanism, this feed turns on. Even as soon as the first signal hits, this feed turns on and is set on a delay. So that when this feed uh, ticks through, it will allow this, which is a currently activated inhibitor, which prevents any signal from going forward, to deactivate, which allows the signals from the bits to continue onward, and also sends a signal up to this row of torches, which after a short time reset the bits so that the signal is, or so that the mechanism is ready for the next input from the keyboard. So to recap, the signals enter the device, the they set these bits here, which pass the signal on, but the signal can't pass on because of the inhibitors. So these, this signal, after a short period of time, deactivates the inhibitor, letting the signal all pass on uh, as it is resynchronized, and then resetting all of the bits. Once the signal passes through the signal synchronizer, it gets fed into all three of the uh, decoder stacks. And the decoder stacks are programmed with all of the ASCII characters themselves. And how this works is each one of the characters has a filter underneath it, just like this. And what this filter does is it looks for a particular binary uh, input. Uh, in the case of this first one, it's looking for um, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it's looking for uh, the binary character 1 to be on. And if the 
um, input does not equal the uh, the binary code that the particular filter is looking for, then this feed here is kept on. So as you can see, because no input is being passed through, all of the characters have their uh, filters keeping these feeds on. So this particular character is looking for just one particular input from the one feed. And what that does is it turns this torch off, which deactivates this uh, block, which deactivates this line. These other ones are looking for zeros. Now the zero, it works in a very similar fashion. Uh, if the signal is off, as you can see, then the signal's off. If the signal is on, then the signal, I then this torch is on, which keeps the filter on and prevents the character from being activated. So once the character is, uh, the binary input matches what the filter is looking for, then this particular feed turns off. And what that does is it goes through this little spirally type thing here and deactivates all of these lines. Here, 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 and here which activate these torches that are connected to them. That's how each of the characters are programmed in. So once each of these torches are active, they in turn activate the feeds that connect to the displays. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time, but we're at a good stopping point, so we'll call that the end of part one. In part two, I'll be going over the displays and how they work. So, if you click on that link, we can get right back to it.